What's up everybody, Brian Earhart with Team Discraft here. We are at the beautiful Smuggler's Notch Resort, Fox Run Disc Golf Course for another episode of Level Up. Today, myself and our resident forehand specialist, Aaron Gossage, are going to help answer the age old question, how the heck do I get more distance on my sidearm? Let's get into it. So first and foremost, before you go out and start practicing your forehand and you begin throwing forehands harder, a little bit farther, the big thing to remember is that your body's gonna start going through a little bit more stress the more you start focusing on distance forehands. So please pay very close attention to the strength and flexibility of your elbow and your shoulder specifically. There's a lot of injuries happening in the world of disc golf right now, uh, especially with the shoulder and the elbow. And a lot of times when I work with players, they're telling me that their warm up and their recovery routines before they play and after they play are very minimal. So please pay attention and just a general recommendation, stretch, do some strength training and make sure to build that progressive load before you get into throwing full power forehands. And Aaron, as a sidearm specialist on the Disc Golf Pro Tour who's had some success throwing the distance sidearm, you can probably attest to this. Yeah, definitely. Uh, for me, the big thing is just listen to your body. So um, when I'm out on the course, um, sometimes I'll be, you know, three quarters away through a practice round. It'll tell me it's time to, to quit and you just got to listen to it. So uh, make sure to take care of your body. Just like pitchers in baseball or softball, we also have pitch counts. We have to make sure we're not throwing massive, powerful shots day in and day out without any rest. Like my friend Seth Munzee of Disc Golf Strong has said, the best thing about disc golf is that we can play it every day. But the worst part about disc golf is that we can play it every day. So with that said, please be careful out there and let's get into the teaching. To start, let's talk about the grip. There's a couple grips that I'd recommend and that I see most of the best sidearm players in the world using. The first one is the grip that myself and Aaron both use. This is a standard two finger stack grip. Middle finger is gonna be pressed up against the rim here. Pointer finger is just gonna be naturally placed up against the middle finger. No space between the disc and my hand. It's gonna be nestled right between my thumb and my pointer finger. The other thing that I see players do is a power grip. Now we have the pad of my pointer finger on the inside of the rim and the pad of my middle finger on the inside of the rim. And what this does to our hand and wrist as opposed to the stack grip is instead of the stack grip, which has our wrist moving this way, the power grip has our wrist moving this way. So it sits in the hand a little bit differently and the wrist is a little bit differently engaged than that of the stack grip. Something that I have to change my mind on that I've previously said I was against is the one finger sidearm. So this is literally like the power grip, except we're taking that middle finger off and it's just our pointer finger on the inside of the rim. Now, I still can't say that I would recommend this over the stack or the traditional power grip, but I have seen enough really talented one finger sidearm players come up in the game these days that I can't ignore it go out into the field, experiment, and see which of these sits in your hand the best and which one gives you the best results. Typically when I work with players and they tell me they wanna start learning a sidearm and learning a more distance-oriented sidearm, the goal normally isn't to get to 500 feet uh, of, of power. A lot of times the answer that I get from players when I ask them about their forehand goals is I want a very serviceable, consistent sidearm around 350 feet. That would be satisfying for me. So I have a couple things that I wanna talk about to help get you to that point, uh, and then I'll let our big forehand smasher, Gossage, talk to us about getting even farther. Um, the biggest thing that I see that robs players of distance with their sidearm is uh, a clean release, or lack thereof, a clean release. There's a few different ways that I've seen players lose that clean release and what that does is it forces them to have to throw a more forgiving and less glidey overstable disc to accommodate for the wobble and lack of clean spin. So the first thing that I see when it comes to players missing that clean release is uh, the orientation of their arm as they begin striding and extending to throw the disc. So what I see most of the time, say a player wants to throw a flat 
forehand, right here. Their arm, as they step forward, cocks really high up in the air, and the disc turns to where I can almost see the backside of the disc if I'm standing right in front of them. This is kind of a point of no return in the sidearm, especially if you're still new to it and you're learning a clean release. Because what happens is, and this is what I've seen with a lot of players who do this, they try to throw and it's this long, whippy motion trying to get the disc back to flat. And by the time they do get it to flat, it's too late. And there's really no forward momentum going into the forehand shot. It's a lot of this and then last second they either flip their wrist to try to get the disc back on whatever angle they want or they undercommit and it goes straight into the ground. So in the beginning, my big recommendation to players who are just trying to throw smooth and clean forehands, focus very heavily on wing angle. So I'll stand here. Focus very heavily on the wing angle of release and try not to mess with the nose angle in any way. I know it's not a perfect process. I know the disc is not gonna be perfectly on the wing angle the entire time, but it's just a good rule of thumb to follow. If I'm throwing a flat shot down here, and really the only flat shot with a forehand is with your forearm parallel to the ground like this, we need to work our body around this angle. I don't wanna see a new forehand player going all the way up here and trying to bring it down and then try to throw the disc flat. I would much rather see a player keep the disc here, work their way around this angle and throw the forehand. Same thing with throwing a hyzer flip. If you want to learn how to shape shots with a forehand, we'll drop the wing angle to a hyzer and let's work our body around this hyzer angle. So when we do rotate our torso into this brace foot, we already know what angle we're throwing on. There's not a lot of guessing last second and we can really accelerate into that angle of release. And if you can really commit to that first 10 to 15 feet of the flight, knowing what angle you want that first 10 to 15 feet flying, you can really throw a lot cleaner shots with a lot less wobble because all the momentum we're generating goes straight into spinning the disc and accelerating it forward. The other thing that I see a lot of the time, players that want to throw flat sidearms, and this is typically what I hear. I hear players that say, I want a 350 foot sidearm and I want it to be nice and flat and very simple. I think a lot of times players forget what flat really is in a sidearm, because obviously for backhand, it's not down here. A backhand flat shot is very close to the chest and we're standing very upright when we throw flat. But really, we're not throwing a flat sidearm up here chest level. That would not be a good motion for our elbow. What we want is our forearm parallel to the ground, but we want the disc down here. This is where a true flat shot comes from. So with that, the disc we want to throw for that shot is going to be a little less stable than you're used to. We're not necessarily chopping a distant sidearm all the time. That brings the elbow off the side of the body and that puts it in a little bit more risky of a position. Um, sometimes we need that position for scrambles and whatnot, but a better stock sidearm is a little closer to the body and a little flatter and lower to the ground. All right, so a quick recap on those two topics. The first thing, quiet the upper body and try to limit these big motions, swinging the arm and disc up like this. It just makes it a little bit harder to get that release point consistent and there's a lot of overcompensations at the last second. Number two, to go along with that, focus more on the wing angle of the disc at release and working your body around that wing angle rather than showing the face or the bottom of the disc to the target. I'm gonna send it over to Aaron right now. He's gonna talk about utilizing your body's position to send the disc faster without having to necessarily throw the disc harder. So what I'm gonna show you guys here today is how to build a forehand from the ground up and just go over some of those fundamentals to add a little bit of extra distance to your game. So to start off, uh, the first thing I'd like to go over is the footwork. Um, starting from the ground, um, as far as a forehand goes, instead of having an X step, kind of like a backhand, it's gonna be more of a shuffle. 
So when you're throwing the actual shot, you're gonna see your feet will come together, but never quite cross. Um, it's just a little bit different, but um, that's kind of the basic place to start. From there, uh, moving up the body just a little bit, um, one of the keys is a deep knee bend. You wanna get nice and low to the ground, and what this is going to do is it's going to create this pocket right here that you can keep your elbow in so you can keep that nice flat surface area to throw your forehand nice and flat and straight and keep your elbow nice and close to your body. Without getting low to the ground, you don't have this room in order to get the forehand through there. Moving on, uh, this next step um, is kind of where most of that power is going to be generated from. And I like to think about it as kind of my left hamstring or that driving leg that creates the hip rotation. So when I'm throwing the shot, most of my power is coming from right here. I've got my legs nice and bent, and then I'm pushing through with this left hamstring. And my leg is straightening, but not getting all the way straight, and that's what's driving my hips forward. This is what is kind of creating that thing called lag that we have in disc golf. And a lot of people talk about this, and a lot of people aren't really sure exactly what it is. But the point of the lag is what you want is the disc to be the farthest thing back in the motion. So when you're driving forward, the first thing to go is going to be your hips, and then you'll see your elbow follow, and then it just puts the disc all the way in the back so that by the time it comes through, it's like a, a whip, and it's the, the last thing to snap through and creates a ton of speed. Um, the last thing that really helps create that lag in that motion is kind of your backswing. So just like a backhand, when you're coming backwards, um, that disc moving backwards helps create that lag because your body will start to move forward before the disc stops moving backwards. That's gonna get the disc as far back as possible and really exaggerate that lagging motion to drive the disc forward. So I don't have the longest forehand in the world um, or the fastest, but one of the things I do really well is I get a nice consistent release for a very solid shot that does exactly what I want it to every time. So one of the ways I do that, kind of reiterating on what Brian said earlier, is that angle control. For me, the thought I have in my head is whatever angle I'm on, I like to focus on keeping the disc in that, that line in the backswing, through the release point, and all the way into the follow through. So if I'm throwing a flat shot, when I'm lining it up, I make sure to keep that disc nice and flat all the way through the entire shot. All the way through the backswing, the release point, and then the fall through, keeping the palm up in a very consistent shot. Same thing with the uh, Anheuser, Anheuser release. The only difference is I'm going to start low, get to that release point, and finish upwards, keeping my palm up. And then with an Anheuser, same thing. I start high, get to that release point, fall through downwards, still keeping that palm up. This will give you a lot more consistency in your shots and it gets you the shot that you're looking for most of the time. So all these little tips that I've given you today will help you build distance with your forehand without actually putting more stress on your shoulder and elbow because it makes a more well-rounded shot using all of your body instead of just your arm. Thank you everybody for tuning in. As always, leave us a comment down below with your favorite forehand disc, and also let us know some topics you'd like us to cover in the future. Aaron, thank you so much for sharing your insight with us, and we will see you next time. Good luck out there, and we will see you on the course.